Well, hey, good day, everybody. This is Joe. Hey, a few weeks ago, I got a package in the mail from Arizona, and it's from a gentleman by the name of Ryan Adney. Now, you might, if you're a typewriter aficionado, you might remember Ryan Adney, school teacher in Phoenix area, who was featured on several nationally broadcast stories about the typewriter revival a few years ago. He was the gentleman who had a the classroom typewriter project. Well now he's working on a different project. He is doing um, teaching photography and he has created a 3D printed pinhole camera kit and he sent one to me to put together and to review. Compliments of Ryan. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna uh, Take this bag, open it up, and see what all the parts are inside, and see if I can't put it together today. It's a windy, blustery, cold day outside. It's great weather if you like blowing tumbleweeds in the cold weather. I think we're going to roll our sleeves up. Compliments of Ryan. Nice touch. Looks like he's included some 220 grit sandpaper. Of course, I have sandpaper of my own. Let's pull out all these parts here and see what we have. I really admire these 3D printed boxes that people are making with this uh, interlocking joinery. It's really kind of cool. There's those two. There's these two, which are a little bit different in size. That. Plenty of parts. And we have frame. We have some little rings, 3D printed rings. This looks like a shutter. And a little piece, oh, he's already made the pinhole. Looks like it's in a thin piece of flexible plastic, black plastic, and a piece like that. Well, I'm going to see if I can put this together. Okay, let's talk a little bit about assembly of this box. So I tried initially just to fit one of the side pieces onto the base of the outer box just by kind of wiggling the joints together and I was able to do it they it took quite a bit of trial to do it and obviously you couldn't do that wiggling it together once more than one of the sides is on so you really need to do some fine touch-up work on the little fingers of these notches and Ryan in his email to me suggested that this 220 grit sandpaper is really for finishing the outside that I would need a a more coarse sandpaper for touching up those the joinery so they'll fit together snugly I decided though to, to use a little uh, file this is a three-sided file and the size of the sides of this file are about perfect for getting in there and uh, sanding, filing down uh, each of the sides of these notches. And the idea of this is not to take the wood down too much, just to get the char off of the surface of the joinery where the laser cut it. And that should help ensure a nice snug fit. I went ahead and put the side on that way. I filed down the notches, the sides of the notches on both sides of the side piece, and then the notches sticking out on the back lid. And then this piece fit on just nice. So I'm going to go ahead and take this other side piece here and I'm going to start filing down these surfaces just to get the char off. Okay, so if I've done that right, this hopefully will just sit in there. I'm going to try to get all the notches lined up first. There it goes. That's the back half. It needs to be fitted a little tighter. I'll work on that. Okay, I've pressed all the joints together on this, the outer box, and uh, they look nice and flush. Of course, I have not put any glue on them yet, and I was just wanting to test fit the inner box. So the two long pieces of the inner box the smooth edge goes toward the front of the box where the front uh, camera or the camera is and that front half does not have interlocking joints that just glues on it like that but I wanted to test fit it and see how snug it was and it looks like it's pretty nicely designed it goes in there very uh, precisely however there's not going to be a whole lot of room for a glue fillet 
once you fit both side, fit the inner box in, there's those joints look like there's not much play for much glue down in there. What I've done here is to apply the glue, I started it down in the bottom in the back corners in the recess. And um, my bottle of glue, I'm using uh, wood glue, and it has a very wide applicator tip. So to get the glue nice and where, just where I wanted it, I ended up using a pointed uh, bamboo chopstick and just dug, I opened the bottle of glue, took the cap off, and just fished out some glue a little bit at a time and tried to dab it along the, the bottom joint carefully and around the whole perimeter of the bottom. And then it was a little bit easier on the sides here because I could just kind of run my chopstick along like that, wetted with glue. And then the big, the big trick is take yourself some Q-tips, cotton swabs, and start cleaning up the excess glue all around those joints. Because So the glue will soak into the joint, but you don't want an excess bead of glue especially in the corner where three joints meet, it's going to pile up with a big clump of glue there. And if you let it harden, that's going to be rock hard and difficult to clean out. So I uh, basically wetted uh, the Q-tip and sort of slowly wiped off the excess uh, glue, wiping my Q-tip on a napkin, paper towel. And so um, I'm going to let it cure now. So I have, it looks like a pretty good glue joint on all the in inner... Uh, recesses there and hopefully it'll be not too much glue that the inner box uh, won't go in easily and if I have to I can sand down these corners of the inner box if there's a little bit uh, still in the in the joint there that's keeping it from moving so in the meantime while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on this uh, the outer box I'm going to start uh, filing the edges of the notches on the pieces for the inner box and start getting that put together now. Okay, so on the uh, inner box, I went ahead and experimented with filing the char off all the joints, all the sides on all the pieces instead of just one of each. And uh, it definitely goes together easier. I'd almost say it's almost a little too loose, but probably not by the time I get the back piece put on here. The side piece. See how this fits here. But you'll have to experiment with how much. It's a little looser, but that also means the glue is probably going to soak into the corners a little bit better. There it is, ready to put some glue down in there. Okay, so instead of using my carpenter's wood glue with a blunt applicator tip, I'm going to use some school white glue with a nice fine point and try to get the glue directly down inside the box instead of using a chopstick and also because of my excessive filing one of these panels which one is it one of these panels is a little bit loose so I'm going to probably have to clamp the box together to let the glue dry okay well I'm not nearly as concerned about excessive glue on these inner corner fillets because this is the inner box but this uh, little applicator tip on this Kids Glue, Scholastic brand white glue, sure uh, was a lot easier to put the glue down. So I'll go ahead and let this sit here and cure. Okay, well, it's uh, the next morning. The one box doesn't quite fit into the other box now. Well, it actually does on this end. The tolerances were very tight. Uh, even before the joints were glued and so the inner box is going to definitely have to be sanded and I'm going to use a random orbital sander. It's going to need to be sanded so that it fits snugly uh, into the outer box. Taken into account after it's been painted it still has to be not too tight so I'm going to have to make it a little bit looser than I would otherwise so once it's painted it's going to be a uh, about the right fit. So a lot of painting and sanding to be done today. So I'm going to get with it. Okay, so I've been working on sanding the inner box mainly with my random orbital sander, 320 uh, grit sandpaper is the finest I had. I think it's a pretty good weight. So I wanted to concentrate on the little uh, joinery along the edges of the box uh, because uh, 
when I glued them up, some of them were just sticking out a little bit. So I've also rounded the corners up here on the sides a little bit, and that helps the box to fit into the outer part uh, with the glue joints in the corners. So it looks like it fits pretty uh, smoothly. Um, now if you flip it around the other way, it's a little tighter, so there's a little bit of not quite uh, perfectly uniform there. But keep in mind that this is, uh, the wood is bare, and I'm going to have to deal with the, fact, the reality that once I paint the inside surfaces, they're going to be tighter. So I really want to get this a little looser. Um, I've sanded by hand with the sanding block. I've been sanding the inside of these too, and I've also filed down a little bit of the glue fillets on the corners just to uh, get them to be not so tight. But So I'll end up having to paint the inside surface of the outer box first, and that'll be a reference point that I can continue sanding the inner box until it feels loose enough that I can then paint the inner box, and hopefully the two painted surfaces will then made up uh, properly without too much binding. There is a little bit of binding when you try to take it out. You have to take it out real straight. But uh, anyways, you don't want too big of a gap in there either, otherwise you get a light leak, which is one concern. So I broke out my classic old bottle of black acrylic paint that I've used for years uh, for little pinhole camera projects. So I painted the inside of the inner box and I painted, painted the inside of the outer box, and having done so, it's not quite completely dry yet, but I've held it up to the light and I can verify that just painting over the little wood glue joints in all the fillets and all the corners has definitely made this box now light tight. And uh, so, uh, now that the, the inside is painted, now in order to get the inner box to fit into the outer box, I'm going to have to do more sanding on the outer surfaces of the inner of the inner box so that it feels smooth enough that once I paint this surface that it will be not too tight. Okay, so it's painting and sanding. Okay, so uh, one of the neat things about fitting the inner box and the outer box together is since I've already painted the inside of the outer box and it's dry enough to I can test fit it. Wherever it binds up, it's going to leave a little mark of paint, like right here, for instance, and that tells me where to sand. It tells me the tight place to sand. So I have it pretty good now. It's uh, It actually will fit in there both ways, uh, fairly loose now, without any binding. So I'm going to do a little bit more sanding by hand with a sanding block, and then I'll go to paint this. So I think uh, I'm about ready to try painting this, uh, the inside, the outside of the inner box and see if I still have a good fit to it. Okay, so I've uh, gone ahead and painted the outside surface of the inside box and it's pretty well dry now and uh, what I did with the inside of the outside box, <laughs> if that makes any sense, after it was dry I took a microfiber cloth, kind of a coarse textured microfiber cloth, and I kind of um, buffed up the paint because when the acrylic paint hits the wood, it's going to cause some of the some of the pores in the wood to swell a little bit, and then the paint leaves kind of a rough finish, so it's a matte finish paint. So I just kind of buff the insides with this microfiber cloth. It doesn't really take off the paint, but it just makes it smoother and. Uh, so I've done the same thing to the insert, the outer outsides of the insert box. I've just buffed up the paint when it's dry and it kind of smooths it down a little bit. And uh, So uh, it looks like it fits adequately enough and I can use it as a camera. And I sanded the outside on the random orbital sander so I can get it to uh, be pretty good in appearance. I'm going to put some polyurethane on this or maybe some uh, some kind of wood oil or polyurethane on the outside in order to give a nice wood appearance. The front panel, front plate to the camera. I sanded both sides but so it has this oval shaped little manufacturing mark which I prefer to have on the inside but the way this piece of plywood is slightly warped 
um, it's going to be better if I glue it like this so that'll put that little oval mark on the outside hopefully it won't be too distractive I'm going to um, put polyurethane or wood oil on the outside but of course the inside of the lid will be painted black and that's where the pinhole is going to be mounted and I was sanding down the little ring for the shutter I sanded the outer edge of it and I'm going to glue that into place and then the larger ring that becomes part of the lens cap I'm going to have to, uh, before I glue it to the cap, I'm going to have to sand the inside surface so that it makes a better fit on that smaller ring. Alright, so I have the uh, front plate of the camera gluing onto the front edge of the inner box and I have all four sides clamped down and uh, I'll wait for it to dry. Filing out the excess glue in preparation for this to dry and then I can paint it. So when I painted the inside of the inner box I put a piece of gaffer's tape down first to uh, protect that area so that'll be where I put my tape at and the pinhole. Okay, so this is, uh, may not look it exactly, but it's a third of a millimeter. I think I got it pretty close, nice and round. All right, so here's a little, what, three quarter inch, roughly square piece of brass. And using my normal method of a sewing needle and a cork for a handle, piece of 600 grit emery, and careful, judicious poking and sanding and examination under a loop and using a millimeter scale I have a third of a millimeter so a third of a millimeter is what Mr. Pinhole Calculator says I need for an 87 millimeter focal length camera which is the focal length of this camera 87 millimeters uh, 0.3 millimeter pinhole that's about f260 so we'll rate this camera at f260 so I'm gonna go ahead and get a piece of gaffers tape cut a little diamond shaped hole and get it mounted to the inside of the camera Okay, first of all, starting on the front, we have our little cap. So we've had it painted black on the inside. The opening around the pinhole, on the front of the wood, we've all painted black on the inside also. Our pinhole piece of brass is clearly visible there. Uh, the kit has the little handle that helps you remove the cap. And I, after it was all finished, I had to do a little sanding around the inside of the rim to account for the, uh, take off some of that paint so this sort of made a custom fit so it's nice and snug like that, not too tight, not too loose. The uh, body comes apart like that and it's all been blackened all around there, even including the little flange along the front panel that mates up against the flange on the back of the camera body. The back is, is all blackened as well. And it is a 4x5 inch format camera, so I'm going to do a test exposure now. It's cloudy outside, and I'm going to use Harman Direct Positive Paper just to and make it easier to get a positive image for you guys to see and for me to see. So I'm going to cut a sheet of 4x5, pre-flash it, load it in the camera, go mount it to a little um, this, this camera does not have a tripod bushing, so I'm going to use my old trick of a, one of my mounting plates that already has uh, a tripod bushing and a bungee cord, elastic bands to hold the camera in place. I'm going to set it up outside, make an exposure. It'll probably end up being over a minute, maybe a couple minutes because of the light. And then I'm going to process the print. I might make two prints just because I'm going to be using my Jobo rotary tank. It holds two pieces of paper, so hey, why not? Okay, there is the camera on my Bogan tripod on a little wooden plate with a rubber band. And I'm just taking an exposure of my wooden trellis and the wall and the trees in the backyard behind it. Nothing special, just a scene. And the setup for my second exposure. This little decorative metal crow in the foreground and just the back wall, maybe some of the trellis or whatever. Another 8 minute, 15 second exposure as per my light meter. Well, it remains to be seen if the exposure is good or bad because this Harman paper is so finicky.
Well, okay, I just opened the lid, and I don't know what we got. Let's see. Oh, this is the first shot. Wow. That's pretty cool. I'll have to show it on the on the better camera. I'm pretty impressed. And then, that, that was the second shot, actually. This is the first one. Well, I was uh, fairly pleased with the results of this project, both in the way the camera came out and the pictures. Let me show you guys again. Now, these aren't completely rinsed. I just rinsed them for a few minutes. They're still damp. And uh, so this is the first image. There is a little bit of fogging along the edge down here, the border. But overall, my 8-minute, 15-second exposure is pretty good, and I like the uh, sharpness is pretty good as well. Got some shadow detail, so obviously the pre-flashing helps a lot there. And then the second shot, also the same exposure time. And there is a little bit of light leak along the bottom edge, it looks like. So uh, that's happening. But overall, pretty good results, I thought. Overall, uh, as I said, I'm pretty pleased with the results of this. Now, I think this is a very beautiful camera. I think the way the, the wood turns out... The accuracy of uh, laser cutting the pieces ahead of time, it makes for a really nice wooden camera. It is pretty much patterned in design after the uh, Ilford Obscura pinhole camera that Harman Ilford sells. And what's really nice about it is it's sized to take a 4x5 sheet of paper, which is what I had. I had a 4x5 pack of Harman. It just dropped the paper in the back of the box there's enough clearance that goes down easy and then slip on the front half into it. Uh, works pretty nice. I did notice that so my Harman direct positive paper, it's fiber based paper and the uh, it's thick paper and it has a natural curl to it and it was pretty stiff and kind of curled toward the front of the paper when I got it out of the pack so when I stuck it in the camera out in the cold it wanted to kind of push the box out a little bit just maybe a couple millimeters I noticed but that was I noticed that mostly on the second shot which really had less fogging than the first one the second one here there's a little bit of lightness along the bottom border which would be the top of the camera this image here there's more noticeable fogging here it goes into the image area and a little bit up here as well so um, when I first started examining this design of this camera when I opened up the kit, I did notice that the way uh, the two box halves go together is if there's any light is, uh, going into the camera in the gap between the inner and outer box, it's going to immediately hit the paper. And when I've always designed box cameras like this, one box nested into the other. I always design it so the paper goes into the inner box, the inside of the inner box, and then the outer box goes over it with a pinhole in the outer box. And that way if there's any light leaking in, it has to totally reflect back into the inner one. There's less of a chance of it fogging the paper. So this is not really a design fault of Ryan Adney's. It's more of this is just the design of the Ilford Obscura that he was kind of patterning it after. Now as far as the most expedient way to make a pinhole camera, I believe, is black foam core and gaffer's tape, black gaffer's tape. You need a razor knife, straight edge, scissors, that's pretty much it. Maybe a hot glue gun. So if the objective was making a camera in a classroom setting for kids and it was going to be like a one day or one week project, I really think uh, uh, that would be the way to go. But this is a nicer camera. This is a wooden camera. This will last you for years, but it's a lot more work. And to do it, to give the design any justice, you're really going to need some additional materials like clamps and really a random orbital sander or some kind of power sander. Uh, more, uh, you know, electrical woodworking tools that maybe a classroom may not have, but it is a wonderful camera if you can put it together. There's a lot of finesse in the way the pieces have to fit together like for instance just an example the cap getting it sanded just right so it it fits securely without being too tight the same thing with the box halves having them snug while not too loose and not getting too much light leak in it um, so it is a finicky design a little more sophisticated build 
experience is required, but I was really pleased with the outcome, and I thank you, Ryan, for the, you giving me this opportunity to review your camera, build it, and use it, and it does really put out great pictures, and I thank you very much. Well, that's it, guys. Until next time, you have yourselves a great day. <music>